Hello, I'm Shelley Quinn. I'm J.D. Quinn. And we invite you to pull up a chair and join us around the table for family Amen. worship. We're excited. Tonight we will be speaking to the topic of walking in the power of surrender. Amen. You know, I have to wow. say this. Yeah. When, when, when I've been out to denominations that don't talk about surrender much and speaking, you use that word and you just see everybody go. <coughs> men, it's like, mm. oh, I'm going to be controlled. And women, it's, or, or, mm. or men, it's like, I have to give up. And women, mm. it's like, I'm going to be controlled. People don't like that word. Mm. So what is the word? What are we talking about? And we've got some of our 3ABN family members, some of your family members around the table. Honey, yes, we'll start us? right straight across. And this is Ann and Angela. The we absolutely love y'all. We love all. you guys too. And look at that. You're kind of matching colors. <laughs> got we tried. Memo. We tried. <laughs> and we have Sasha and we have Darrell. And they're matching too. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the Quins and we're queer matching too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I do know that it's fun to laugh. At the, and boy, this is a serious topic. I know that I, I fought this for years. You know, surrender. I mean, I don't know if I watch too many black and white movies, you know, but surrendering and, uh, but boy, when we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about surrendering, we're talking about the creator of the universe and a walk with him. Where do I start? Yeah. Mm. What we'd like to do to begin with is have a prayer and then we'll jump into our topic. I hope you have your Bibles. We have, we know what questions we're going to ask and hopefully answer in this program, but there's no real format. This is just going to be an open forum discussion, but we hope you'll be joining us. Mm -hmm. Honey, you want to have a prayer? Yes. Father, once again, we just come to you in the name of Jesus and we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, an opportunity that we can share with people everywhere, Lord, that, that are wondering, what is my walk with Jesus like? Who am I in Jesus? Father, do we give consent to you to rule our lives? Or are we running from you, Lord? And so, Father, we're just asking as we go through this that, that the questions will be answered. Mm -hmm. And Father, just fill us with the Holy Spirit yes, and be our yes. guide, be a lamp to our feet. We love you and thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's amen. just kick this off. Kind of, let's go around the table. Ian, we'll begin with you. All right. Just what is your idea, your concept? What does surrender mean to you? Well, you know, in the very beginning, you kind of said that, you know, with men, it's, it's almost like giving up. And that's how, how I originally thought of surrender. And for me, it was actually, it was very much a battle that I had, you know, as well, JD, to, to actually surrender. And I never really knew what that meant, even when I gave my heart over to God. Uh, you know, the, I could still remember today, the day that I, I decided to give it all to God, where I wasn't going to do things my way anymore, because I had done it for 38 years my way, and it always mm -hmm. ended up in pain and misery or loss mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. not understanding who I was and identity issues and mm -hmm. all sorts of things. But mm -hmm. I can remember the day that I turned my life over to God, and I said, you know what, it's, it's your turn. Amen. I'm going to give it over to you. But even then, and in that moment, I still didn't understand really what surrender was. It, it's taken uh, several years for me to really kind of go through my own personal experiences mm -hmm. to figure out what true surrender really is. And for me, it's, even though I, I said in the beginning, I no longer want to do it my way, I think a lot of us have still some mm. things in us that we hold on to, mm -hmm. that are hard for us to, mm -hmm. to get rid of. Yeah. Uh, because we've either cultivated it or it's something that was hereditary oh, yeah. or whatever the case may be. Uh, it's just something that has clinged on to us and it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, you know, when we're told that we're going to pick up our cross daily and follow Jesus. And I think mm -hmm. surrender is when you're willing to fight. <laughs> surrender is when you're, when you're willing to, like to no longer let those things that had dominion over you uh, to, for you to be in, in, I guess, in unison with Christ to fight for your life uh, because that's really what it comes down to. It's not a, a, a surrender of I'm giving up in the sense of you're losing who you are. I like that. It's just you're willing to surrender to, to fight with Jesus on becoming who he wants mm -hmm. you to be so that you can m become part of his kingdom 
And that's kind of, at least for me, mm -hmm. uh, in my experience and what surrender might be. I know it might not fit what most people would think, but... Oh, I think everybody's experience is right. personal when it comes to surrender. So if you, Angela, had to put a definition to surrender, somebody said, what do you mean surrender? How would you define it? Um, I would define it as doing God's will and not your will. That's good. Mm. Yeah, I feel like surrender is following God. And like, I know sometimes with my thoughts or even my actions, sometimes I don't want to do something. And some, the other day I was, um, I wanted to hand out um, this great controversy book. And then I was, it was this person, I was like, no, no, they didn't look nice. But God kept impressing me mm. to do it. And then I'm like, I don't want to do it. So I know God's pinning this on me because mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. So I know it's not me, it's God. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. to me is kind of surrendering, doing something you don't want to do, mm -hmm. knowing you need to do it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that's a daily thing. As, hour by hour. Sometimes. Yeah, hour, <laughs> minute by minute, yes. Yeah. And right. to me, my biggest surrender prob that I need to surrender more of is time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think as a mother, as a wife, working full time, mm -hmm. right. my time is something I need to surrender more mm -hmm. to God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so Darrell, how would you, and, and the questions we're asking and, and hopefully answering tonight is how do you define surrender? Why is it important we surrender? How do we surrender? What is the challenge of surrender? And I think you just spoke to that, talking about our time. Mm -hmm. And what is the power of surrender? So Darrell, just give us a nutshell. How would you define surrender? Uh, I would define surrendering as essentially escaping for your life. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't realize that we're in the midst of a, a battlefield. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're unwilling to put aside um, differences that we might have with people or preconceived ideas that we've had. And then God comes along and tries to remind us of the warfare that we're in. Um, and, and for each of us, the warfare is experienced differently, um, some to a greater or lesser degree. But for each of us, he comes to us and, and reminds us of the warfare. And then he says the only way to escape is if you place your trust completely and unreservedly mm. in me. Um, I, I think of uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse, verses 5 to 8. Um, I don't know if you mind me sure. reading. It says, Let this mind be in you, mm. which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And so it reminds me of the fact that Jesus, I, I think of the, the scenario where, uh, or the parable of the, the um, man who was without a wedding garment. Um, he was invited to come to this feast, but he would not relinquish his own um, regular garments in exchange for the garments that were presented mm. to him by the king. And I, find, I think each of us, like Ian was saying, each of us finds ourselves in that position on a daily basis where we're, we're brought to this place of contention. Mm. Um, and it's often when we are brought to a place where we have to obey when it's the hardest point in our lives to obey. Um, but but the, the, the wonderful thing is that when it's the hardest time to obey, that's true surrender. When you, when you actually obey, that's, that's what true surrender looks like. Because if it's, not, if it's not hard, then, you know, the Lord can't polish and shape us. He can't mold us. Mm -hmm. But He brings us to those contentious moments so that He can finally bring us to a place where we recognize we're on the battlefield yeah. um, and we're in the midst of a fight. Mm. Uh, both of you gentlemen have set up fights. <laughs> Sasha, what would you say? Well, my simple answer is the first thing that comes to mind is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he says, not my will, but yours mm. be done. Yeah. That's a simple wow. answer wow. of surrender for me. But um, it's hard. It is a fight, but in the end, it's totally worth it. Amen and yeah. amen, honey. Wow. You know, I've thought about this for a long, long, long time, and probably within the last 10 years did it just jump off the page at me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all have reached the time, or maybe this is, I was, might have been doing this whenever I was a 
kid. You've run into somebody and you know them, but you, you can't quite connect the name. And someplace along life's way, go through the alphabet. Yeah. A, B, C, D, E, F, 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 Frank, Frank. Yes. So that's the way it was with me because, uh, boy, we've hit on most of them. Raise my hands. Oh, no. You know? Dominion. Ooh. Giving up. No way. Obey. Uh-uh. <laughs> then out of nowhere, there came the C. Consent. Mm -hmm. I certainly can consent. <laughs> I love that. And at that particular time, it's like I took another step climbing the ladder to heaven, you know. Mm -hmm. I can consent, Lord. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I just, it, I, we all wrestle with different things. But boy, to surrender to me is to consent. I consent, Lord. Mm -hmm. I'll let you have it. Because I always That's wanted you to have it. Not my will, but yours mm -hmm. be done. I yeah. give you consent. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I have come to the point in trying to explain this to people over years that if I had to give a one word definition for surrender, it's yield. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you see that yield mm -hmm. sign, you yeah. come to the intersection and you've got cars coming everywhere. There's, there's a right of way of law that is a right of way. I have learned in all of these intersections of my life to yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's all it's about. That's what surrender is about, is to let Him direct the traffic in your life, to let Him. I mean, yes, it's a, it, we're fighting for our lives. We're on the battlefield. You're not giving up. We mention trust. We mention humility. And you know, that is what true humility is all about, is total dependence upon God. Mm -hmm. So, and we've mentioned the word obedience. So let, let's ask this question and just jump in as you will. Why is it important that we surrender? Well, number one for me is getting me out of the way. I mean, Ann and I were on the same page here. I would imagine all of us, you know, we're used to doing things our own way, especially a man. You're supposed to be in charge. You're supposed to do this. Growing up, you have all this responsibility or you've heard of all this responsibility and you really don't know even how to handle it. And then the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit says, hey, man, I'm here to assist you. We'll walk through this journey together. Yeah. And his ways are higher than our ways. And But how, you know, taking that step and... Uh, oh, that's where I went. Mm -hmm. You know, I always think about, I always bring up parenting when I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it's my life, but I guess it is. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a major but, part of your life. Yeah. I think of the, the countless times that my kids or our kids want to do things themselves. Mm. Um, and I know that they can't do it. Um, but I have to allow them to come to the place where they desire that help. Um, and I believe the Lord does the same. He doesn't force us to accept his help, but he, he, he brings us to a place where we recognize that we need the help and then we yield, mm -hmm. we surrender. Um, and I, I think that's a wonderful example of what a parent is supposed to be, mm -hmm. um, not trying to force your children to do things, but allowing them to come to the place where they're willing to surrender. I and I understand we're not parents, you know. We have a lot of spiritual children, but as far as parents, I mean, I think that you grow your three score and ten yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not, well, if I can just reach the 40, I got it made, raised my kids, things are going good. <laughs> my understanding is, at least my parents told me their, their long life, is that you'll always be my son. Mm -hmm. We'll always be your parents. We'll always be here. We love you. Mm -hmm. And... That's, I think, what we're all looking for, you know. You mean you will accept me the way I am? Well, there's a few little spots we may need to kind of rub down and smooth out, but uh, yeah. Well, what's interesting as a parent, oftentimes, because I'm the adult, and I know I, I, I know better than them, it's hard for me to surrender in that moment. Mm -hmm. to the, the Lord says, don't force them. Mm -hmm you know, lead them, guide them, but don't force them to do something. Um, and so it's like, 
to mm. surrender in that moment and say, okay, Lord, you are the better parent. You're my father and their father. Right. And so you know what's best for them. And so that's uh, what's taught me as a parent. I'm still learning a lot, but that's what's taught me as a parent to take my foot off the pedal a bit and to allow for the Lord to work. And then all of a sudden they say, you know, Daddy, could you help me with this? And it's like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he certainly doesn't control us, oh, yeah. does he? Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't force us yeah. to do anything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to exercise your free will mm -hmm. is, uh, it, when you see your child, at first they're wanting to exercise their free will, right. almost like rebellion. But when you give them that unconditional love and you back off and do what the Lord says, you see that their will begins to submit to yours. You know, it, to me, that's a beautiful thing. So why do you think, Ian, you look like you got a thought. Why is it important, <laughs> why is it important we surrender? Um, well, I didn't really have a thought, but I can give you one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, to me, I don't know, coming from my, my military background, and, I, and he and I, you know, Darrell and I have touched on it several times with that fight. And um, one thing I've come to realize in the Christian walk is it's a fight. Uh, you know, you're going to have your moments of, of peace and where things seem to be calm and pleasant. Uh, but then you're going to have those moments of, of warfare. And those are the moments where you, you grow in your Christian walk because now you're, you're forced to make a decision. And sometimes we don't always make the right decision. Sometimes we yield to the, to the wrong thing. And um, the importance of surrender is making sure that when we, when we do yield, that we're yielding to the right one. Amen. You know, um, I think it's, it's Romans... Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's Romans 6, 16, where it says, uh, do you not know who you present yourself slaves to obey? You are that one slave who you, you obey. So you're picking one or the other at the end of the day. You're either pick, picking the devil or you're picking Jesus. Yeah. And no matter what way you want to try to, to spin it uh, for your own, you know, you know, to make yourself feel better or, oh, maybe I can just go down this road or, Aren't you? you know, this one time or, but... Um, to me, the importance of surrender is making sure that you know who you're surrendering to, because if you continue to go down that path of making those wrong choices, uh, it's only going to lead in, into heartache. And I know that from experience, because even in my Christian walk, there have been times where I've surrendered to the wrong thing. And it causes difficulty and pain and anguish at the end. But when I surrender to Jesus, Amen. when I surrender to Him, there is no pain. Mm -hmm. There is no you know, uh, regret. There is no suffering. It's just you know, you grow that much closer to the Lord and it's, it's an amazing feeling. It, it's like that feeling, even though it's the word surrender, you have the feeling of victory. Amen. And it's, it's amazing. You know, whenever here again, being non-parents, we shouldn't be in this conversation, but uh, I certainly heard it many times when I was talking to daddy, go talk to your mama. <laughs> they yeah. were very good at passing it. You just said there's come a time right. whenever you're passing it to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no one else, mm -hmm. you know. And so, empty me of me, Lord, and fill me with you. Right. Okay, so, so let me give you what I would say to me is the most important reason to surrender. And if you want to open your Bibles to Romans 8, 13, we're talking about surrendering to the Lord. We're talking about when you've accepted, it's one thing to accept Christ as your Savior, but if you're going to walk in covenant relationship with Him, you have to accept Him as Lord of your life. And the Bible tells us that when the Holy Spirit is in us, Christ lives in our heart by faith. But here's what Romans 8, 13 says. I happen to have it in the mm -hmm. NIV here. It says, if you live according to the sinful nature, mm. according mm. to whatever you want to do, what's going to happen? You will die. You will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live because, here's the whole point, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a child of God, 
you have to learn to yield to his leading. And I think that, uh, let, let me give you the three steps. I asked God, I've got a sermon on this and it was really sweet. I asked the Lord, I was trying to explain to someone what surrender meant. And I told the Lord, I need something simpler than what I'm doing. Mm. I did a sermon in New Mexico and I had a lady come up to me and I was talking about picking up your cross and we're going to get there and dying to self and everything. She said, that's the meanest, worst thing I've ever heard. And I thought, okay, I need a different way to say this. So I asked the Lord and he gave me three simple steps. These are the three steps to surrender. You have to know God. You have to know his love, mm -hmm. recognize that he knows all things, that he knows the end from the beginning, that his, his interest in you, he, he's, he's got the best intentions for your eternal life. Mm -hmm. So if you know God, the Bible says, we love him because he first loved us. When you understand how much God loves you, guess what? You can't help mm. but love him. But the second thing is to quit rejecting his love and submit to his authority. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people in the world that just won't let God love them. Mm. Uh, don't you talk to people like, I'm not worthy, I'm not this, or right. I don't care, I'm indifferent, I'm apathetic. When in James chapter 4, it says in verse 7 and 8, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Ha! Oh, don't you want the devil mm. to flee? Mm. But when it says resist the devil, it says draw near to God, mm -hmm. and he will draw near to you. Cleanse, he's, he's saying submit. That's a military term, by the way, boys. <laughs> submit means to line up under yep. somebody's authority. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you will draw near to God and submit, he's going to guide your path to the best possible life. Now, your third step, okay, you got to know God. You've got to quit rejecting his love, submit to his authority. That's what your child did. When, when you're trying in love to correct them and they're rebelling, then what happened when you backed off a little, they decided to submit to daddy, mm -hmm. you know, to line up underneath that. But the third thing is to yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Surrender just means, okay, Lord, Tell me which direction I should go in the Holy Spirit. If he goes right, we go right. If he goes left, we go left. He knows what's best for us. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of those scriptures that people generally use. When, when Jesus said in Luke 11, 9, he said to, uh, uh, yeah, he said to ask and keep on asking, mm -hmm. seek and keep on seeking, knock and keep on knocking. And he comes down in verse 13, he says, if you being mm -hmm. evil mm -hmm. know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Somebody's got a thought, jump in. Well, I mean, I, I had I had Matthew seven seven, which Me is too. exactly, <laughs> Me too. and I was, and it was it was um, because of well, something. Well, what does Matthew seven seven say for someone at home? So it says, "Ask and it will be given to you; seek and you will find; knock and it will be opened to you." Then it says in verse eight, "For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened." And I think a lot of people in this day and age have a misconception about what this is referring to because you figure if I ask for something that I'm going to receive it. I know my, my, one of my uh, kids said to me uh, recently, you know, I prayed that we would get such and such. And I said, and they said it, it didn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. And they're really distraught. And I said, well, we, we pray, but we allow for God to answer in the way that he sees fit. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm surrendering what I want 
and I'm allowing God's wants to supersede what I want, recognizing that there's nothing that I could ask for, there's nothing that I could seek for, and there's nothing that I could knock for that God um, wouldn't have a better idea or a better understanding um, of what would be best for me. And so when I, I, the reason why I brought up this text was when we were talking earlier, it made me realize that when you're asking, that's surrender. When you're seeking, that's surrender because the Bible says, ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. um, giving up everything else and just looking for him. And then it says, um, when you're knocking, that's surrender. And so when you look at it like that, it's like, of course I want to ask God for stuff. I want to seek after God. I, I, of course I want to knock and, and find him. And then the Lord's like, okay, well, that's what surrender looks like. Yeah. And so and, sin and I, <laughs> the reason I always use Luke 11, 9 is because Jesus further explained it, that it is about the Holy Spirit. But I want to make this point. Do we just, you know, anybody that, comes to Christ and accepts Him as our Lord and Savior is given the Spirit. But is it just this one-time thing that you're filled with the Holy Spirit? No. Yeah. 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 You know why we're leaky vessels. Right. Boy, are we leaky vessels. You mentioned about how the Father gives us good gifts, right? Yeah. So, and I think we often forget the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. because we will limit ourselves almost, or, or limit Him, I should say. Um, because we might have these certain struggles in our life or things that we go through. And it's like, oh, well, I, you know, he helped me through this, he helped me through that. But then you come to this one part and you feel like, oh, well, I can't, I'm, I can't do it. And truth be told, you, maybe you can't. Uh, but the only one that can is God. And he can do that through you and through the leading of the Holy Spirit. So with, if you don't yield to that, if you don't surrender to that, then whatever it is that you are struggling with, I, Maybe I'm wrong, but you're going to have a very difficult time overcoming it. Oh, um, and you are going to struggle and struggle and struggle until you get to that point where you say, I surrender. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's when God's like, all right, Amen. now I got you where I wanted you. And it just took you a little bit longer <laughs> for you to figure it out. Uh -huh. But that's, that's what I wanted to mention before is just, you know, we think that, um, you know, we see God's working. We see his miracles all the time in us. But for some reason, we get to this one part in our life and we just feel like, oh, well, this is, I'm just going to have to accept this as who I am because I can't overcome it. Well, no, you, you can, but it is only through the power of the Holy Spirit and you yielding to that. Romans that you 8, can. 13. Exactly. It, it says, yes. if you live by the flesh, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. But if by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your flesh. So the Holy Spirit's not going to do it. He's not going to force you. God never forces. Mm -hmm. But what he does do is he will work with you to teach you. And, and the word is so important. Mm -hmm. If you're right. going to, there's some things you don't even know you need to mm -hmm. surrender to. You're into mm -hmm. the word and then mm -hmm. you're going, ooh. Mm -hmm. but, but it's the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, when, when you take Jesus' yoke, when he says to you, mm -hmm. Come to me, you who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Right. When you take his yoke upon you, he said his burden is light. I use, you always loved this example. When I was praying once, trying years ago, and I've been a Christian, I thought for years, but I was trying to learn how to surrender. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying and I'm learning and I'm saying, Lord, give me something. All of a sudden, in my mind, I saw this huge elephant, huge. And then I saw this tiny little sugar ant. And the ant is trying to roll this, this big boulder up a hill. And the Lord said to me, I don't ask you. He said, my power is like the elephants. <laughs> you know, your power is like the little ants. Right. And he said, I don't ask you to do this on your own. Accept my yoke, okay? Now all of a sudden, here's this itsy bitsy little ant, huge elephant. Now you yoke them together. Who's carrying the load? Mm -hmm. Elephant. You know, I mean, you could just see this little ant with his little legs. <laughs> but the funniest thing 
is when we talk about the challenge of surrender, you can be surrendered one minute and something mm -hmm. happens and then all of a sudden it's like you're that little ant yoked to Jesus and your little legs are going, let me down, let me down, I'll do it, Lord, I'll do it. <laughs> We're so funny. Right. So what's been the greatest challenge for you? You said time. What are some of the challenges Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, pick up your cross daily? What did he mean? Well, I, I know in my particular situation, I had a lot of issues like this, you know, because you have your mother and your father there wanting to smooth the road before you. They see that uh, you could be, that could be a dark lane that you're going down. And I remember I turned to him a number of times and says, hey, I'm doing the best I can. God made me this away. Mm -hmm. Boy, what an escape route. Oh, right. Yeah. And so where are they going to go with that, you know? Mm -hmm. and, well, son, maybe we need to sit down and maybe we need to have a little Bible study. You know, maybe we need to explain why this is like this. And here's the scriptures, you know, that, that uh, could make some sense here. But don't take the cheap way out. And that is the cheap and, way. Right. You know, well, talk to God about that. That's God's issue. He's the one that made me like this. And then you just... You know, you've justified it in your own mind. And you were just talking just like that. You were talking like that. I know that I was talking like that. Mm -hmm. Boy, stinking thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's thinking. so popular. You know, you think about the, the temperament types and they teach about being choleric or being, mm. what are the temperaments? I can't even think of them now. Sanguine, but melancholy. Melancholy, sanguine. Uh, phlegmatic. Uh, uh, phlegmatic in choleric. So I met this woman, she's in leadership in the church, and you've never seen a temper in your life like <laughs> this woman had. And I'm like talking to her about it, and she's God made me this way. I'm choleric. And I think sometimes we use, you know, or even in different cultures, sometimes there's, with you, you'll find people in Christian leadership even, who will do things like someone was telling me about a man, a pastor who came in and to a, late to a meeting in a far off country and he said, I'm sorry I'm late, I had to beat my wife. Mm. So sometimes, mm. you know, you, you expect there to be a Christian culture, there should be. Mm. I mean, coming to, when you come to the Lord, when he said, pick up your cross daily, that means you've got to, uh, he, they knew in that day and age, it meant if you're picking up your cross, you're getting ready to die. He's saying to die to yourself daily mm -hmm. and let him live through you. Mm -hmm. But there should be no excuses. God didn't make you that way. Genetics and everything that's going on around your circumstances and how you're reared, this is what brings it in. But that doesn't mean that God may, uh, made you that way. For me, oh. Go ahead. <laughs> For me, when I was uh, uh, coming out of high school, um, just as I was at a, at a point of decision of whether I would go out into the world or whether I would stay with the Lord, um, and having gone to a, a Christian high school, um, I found that a lot of times I, I thought that when I would stand up and I, I would say, no, I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to party, I'm not going to do this or that. When I, when I would stand up, I would feel as though it's just me against the world. All hey, my friends. Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of that story in First Kings. <laughs> I wish I would have stood like Elijah, um, but the more I saw my friends from the, the Christian high school partying, going clubbing and drinking, and initially it started out where, um, like if people would try to encourage me to drink, People knew how I was, so they would say, don't ask Darrell to do that. That's just mm -hmm. not the way that he is. Mm -hmm. But the more I started to talk to myself instead of to the Lord, I started to convince myself, well, it's, it's okay because they're doing it. They're Christian. They profess to be Christians. And so I, in, in my efforts to not feel like I was the odd one out, I joined them eventually. But I realized what you were talking about of, of the yoking of the, the oxen. It's like... If I would have recognized that when Christ told me to, to bear this, this burden, there he is carrying the brunt of it, and he's saying, join me, then I would recognize that I'm ne if I stand up for Christ, I'm never alone. 
And I think that's where a lot of people fall short. They always, they, they tend to think that it's them against right. the world, like I said. But when we recognize that it's impossible for Christ to call us to something that he's not willing to join us in. Um, and so I, I recognize, I wish I would have known that back then. Oh, how, how wish, I wish I'd learned about surrender soon. Sasha? I just wanted to comment on your uh, well, analogy or I guess explanation of the verse, pick up your cross and follow me. Oftentimes I've thought of it as picking up the cross, like you got to carry a burden, you got to push through it, but no, you're dying. So essentially you're saying, I don't have to carry this burden. I'm dying to self and giving this to you, Lord. I you like know, that. when you were talking about Luke 22, 42, not my will, but yours be done, mm -hmm. and you were talking Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Think about this. When Philippians 2, 5 through 8 says, God came down, the second person of the Godhead, came down and took on human flesh. He emptied himself. He became dependent upon the first person of the Godhead in heaven, who, and he did not exercise his independent authority. The Bible says, he don't, Jesus said, I only say what the Father tells me to say, I only do what he tells me to do. He knew a plan was in place he knew he'd come to save the world. And yet, Christ, think about the struggle he had in Gethsemane. <laughs> think about that. That in his flesh, he's like, Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, you know, it had to be a perfect human representative to take man's place on the cross. So it's amazing when you think about, he gave up his independent authority, yet how many of you have been praised? I've been praised all my life for how independent I was. Hmm. You know, because I had to be. I grew up in a very dysfunctional mm -hmm. environment. I had to be the parent in my family. I worked and paid, you know, even my senior year in high school, I worked every night from six to 10 o'clock as a long distance operator back in the day where they plugged in, you know. <laughs> but, but the point is, we're praised for being independent. And the whole thing about humility, he humbled himself mm -hmm. to do only what, and so God's whole plan of salvation is total dependence upon him. Mm -hmm. Can I read this? Yes. I mean, we, we brought this up a little bit ago, you know, but I, it won't leave my mind because I got caught up in this. I don't, anyway, I got caught up in this with the stinking thinking that we were talking about a while ago, and that's, that's James 4, 8. I got this twisted around somewhere. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God, and then He will draw near to you. I got that turned around, you know, where I was. He wanted a Damascus Road experience where God yeah. just came and <laughs> knocked him off his high horse. I like that story because, you know, uh, there's not a lot of thinking involved. Right. It's more reacting. I would, sure, you knocked me off my horse. I, I've learned a lesson. I'll find, you know. And. It says, following that, Psalms 143.10, Teach me to do your will, Lord. Amen. For you are my God, and may the good Spirit, the Holy Spirit, lead me on level ground. My goodness, you know, it's just no telling. We all grew up in different parts of the country, and there was some smooth ground, and there was some bumpy ground. Now, I used to play a lot of scrub ball. Scrub ball means you just, you know, everybody shows up that likes to play ball. <laughs> Wherever there's ground, there's ground. Man, I've caught so many or attempted to catch so many balls that you're right there to catch it, and then all of a sudden it hits a little hump, and it hits an ant bed or something like that, and just jumps over you. <laughs> but that was scrub ball. You were playing ball, but forgetting that, hey, you know, you, you stay with this game, mm -hmm. and you'll eventually play on a level ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or when, a, when you're playing shortstop, the ball comes and you're right there. Versus you're used to sitting here, you know, and here it comes, and all of a sudden, here's it hits that ant bed, cheap. 
<laughs> <laughs> but that's what he's saying here. He's saying, listen, J.D., if you'll draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. That ground out there that you're used to playing in, mm -hmm. you know, it's got so many holes and bumps and everything mm -hmm. in it. You got groundhogs running here. You got prairie dogs running over here. Yep, we I can like smooth how, this okay. out. Yep, I like how um, Sister White says in Acts of Apostle. She has this quote: "He who will build up a strong character, he who would be a well-balanced Christian, mm. I so want to be a well-balanced Christian, Amen. Um, must give all and do all for Christ. For the Redeemer will not accept divided." service. I believe that's living in the earth and living towards God, being mm -hmm. both. Right in the fence. Yeah. That's right, right in the fence. Daily he must learn the meaning of self-surrender. He must study the Word of God, and that's what I need to do more. Lean it, learning its meaning and obeying its precepts. Thus he may reach the standard of Christian excellence. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Day by day God works with him perfecting the character that is to stand in the time of final test. And day by day, the believer is working out before men and angels a subline experiment showing what the gospel can do for fallen human beings. And when I look at this, I just know we're living in the end of days. I know we're at the end. I, I feel like Every day, where every day it's like we wake up and it's just rinse and repeat, but mm. it doesn't need to be rinse and repeat. That's not how God wants us. We get so caught up in work and everything that we don't even have time to surrender to God. And so I feel like we need to do something different in our life. Okay, At least so I how, do. how do you surrender? Let's say we've been saying no. that it's I need to surrender my sleep. That's what I need to surrender. <laughs> Okay, so and that's my battle. It's a matter of uh -huh. seeking him early, because mm -hmm. right. trust me, if if I hit the ground running in the morning, if I don't take time to be with mm -hmm. God, it's simple. It's a mm -hmm. prayer, and it's yeah. Lord, fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Lead me by your good Spirit. Teach me what I need to know. It's not brain science. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, it, it's. But I think. Would you agree, often it's our pride that gets in the way when it comes to surrender? We've got, it's kind of like we like to do things our way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was writing a book and my sister, I, I asked my sister not to call. Uh, she called, I was running the ministry out of our home and, and uh, she'd call five or six times a day. So mm -hmm. I said, I've got to get this book written. I've got three weeks to write it. Don't call me and I'll call you once a day. Well, she'd call, she'd call. So about the third day of this, uh, cause I said, unless it's an emergency, don't call me. So she called and I said, is this an emergency? And she said, no, I just missed your voice. And I, you know, I'd already talked to her <laughs> twice. And I said, honey, I can't talk, I've got, and she said, that's just fine, I don't have a sister. She was a bit of a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> and. I said, you don't have a sister. Or she said, you don't love me. I said, I don't love you. You don't respect me. I do never. <laughs> Hung up, went back to writing on the book, wrote about eight pages. It was all scripturally accurate. Mm -hmm. There was no anointing. Hmm. And you know what the Lord made me do? I realized I had been surrendered until that phone call when I let my temper flare up in response to hers. And so, guess what the Lord made me do? Hmm. Delete. I had to call her and apologize. Oh. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and then, that was the way I surrendered again. See, uh -huh. there's so much of our flesh that comes uh -huh. out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to tell you, I do have worship in the morning. It's just not enough for me. I do pray, and that's where I feel like I need to surrender more of my time. So I, I, I need to wake up earlier and that's where my battle is. Does but it feel like a rush thing or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just asking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes for me, it's just like, I'm just going through the motions. I'm doing this because right. I, I know I have to do it, but I'm not connecting necessarily yes. with what I'm reading. Yes, right. yes. I find it's easier to go through the motions when you're not in contact with 
uh, like other people. They don't bring the worst out of you. In those moments, for me, it kind of, it's a reality check. Like, it's easy for me to be surrendered when I wake up in the morning and I have that nice quiet time, a nice sunrise, the birds chirping, <laughs> and then you give it another 10 minutes and my children get up. <laughs> And then <laughs> I say, I say, as soon as they do something or say something, I say, Lord, I'm surrendered. <laughs> like, why am I having these feelings on the inside? Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to be surrendered anymore. And I realize it's that pride thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the Lord, <laughs> it's like the Lord says, okay, you've had this fresh blessing from me. And then he says <laughs> to the children, wake up, wake up. <laughs> That's the test. Put him through the test. <laughs> but I praise the Lord for those those opportunities to to see where I'm at, where 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 the barometer is is sitting. Because then now I'm at a place where I recognize, even before I have a temptation to have an outburst, I just say, okay, I know the children are going to be getting up soon. I need to pray, Lord, please give me patience. Amen. Please give me Amen. understanding and wisdom. Um, because they may just come and say, Daddy, you know, I love you so much. Or they may say something different. <laughs> you know, Ephesians 3.16. Mm, that's Ephesians right. 3.16, verses 21 and 20 and 21. Start with verse 16. And, and following the, where we are right yeah. now. Yeah. So, Lord, help me. I mean, I, I, <laughs> we... We had a, we, it was a relationship that was real. We were sitting here and exchanging. That's what relationship is all about. Uh, I pray that out of his, and uh, I pray that out of his glorious riches, that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So now to and him. Then, wait a minute, hang, and wait, hang on one okay. second before, because we don't have it all on there. It says, right. it says, he's praying. Paul is praying for the Ephesians, mm -hmm. that God would grant him, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. Mm. That's dunamis power. Mm -hmm. Through his spirit in your inner man for this reason, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts mm -hmm. through faith. And when he's dwelling in your heart through faith, it says so that you can be rooted and grounded in love and may be able to comprehend what's the width, the length, the, di the depth, the height of his love. Mm -hmm. And this is something that to me, this is the power of surrender, mm -hmm. is we have the almighty God make dwelling in us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I one of the things that I wanted to bring up before actually kind of goes along with that because you, you mentioned, I don't know, it was a little bit ago about how Jesus, you know, how he came down as man, um, humbled himself before us and, and all the things that he suffered, all the things that he went through. And if you think about it, he had to live his entire life in thought, mm. in action, in everything sinless to save us. Mm. And you can imagine the struggle and the battles that he went through. I mean, Satan knew who he was, the devil knew who he was, so he knew how to push every button. Exactly. So when you put that into perspective and we think of the challenges that we go through is even close to the amount of what Jesus had to go through in order to redeem us, in order to, to, to make sure that we are saved. I think we need to remember that the one that we surrender to, the one who's going to teach us, as you mentioned in, uh, was it Psalm 143, mm -hmm. verse 10, yeah. the one who's going to teach us, this is the one that quite literally conquered everything. Mm -hmm. for us, who gave up everything for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the prince in heaven. He had it. He was created from the beginning. He was our God from the beginning. And yet he came here to, to save us. And he went through so much for, and we look at our problems as almost insurmountable, like we can't overcome them. And when I think it's important for us to put that into, in the perspective mm -hmm. that this is the person we're surrendering to. He's Amen. the one who conquered everything. But Amen. see, this is where uh, accepting Christ as your savior, you're justified. You know, Romans 3.23 says that all of sin and falls short of the glory of God. But then verse 24 is the same sentence, being justified freely through grace or by grace 
through the redemption of, uh, that's available in Christ Jesus. So, but the idea of being sanctified, that's part of righteousness by faith too, Romans 6, 16. It says that you're going to be slave to whoever you obey. But the point is that when we surrender to him, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. because he infuses us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That righteousness is infused. And then Philippians 2.13 says, he works in us to will and to do his good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Now, I liked what you said, and I want to expound on that a little. It is possible and many Christians go through it that we get a little routine these are the scriptures I pray this is what I say and it's rote how do we break loose where it's not just going through the motions um well I guess both Angela and I have touched on time you have to give yourself time First of all, like in the mornings, we feel rushed, so we go through it quickly. But if you give yourself time, don't just read it to say, okay, I read this chapter today, but read it verse by verse and try to maybe see Jesus in that verse. Because mm -hmm. as you see Jesus, you're going to see his character and then realize, wow, Lord, I'm nothing like you. Help me to surrender so that I can be like you. Mm -hmm. start. I like that. You know, one thing that, I, that I'm gradually learning is that things happen to us in, in, a, daily, in a daily manner. Perhaps it doesn't make sense then, mm -hmm. but perhaps something going down the road, you'll be able to recall it. So at these times, especially whenever you're sitting here, you know, the kids are yelling back here, the pots and the pans are going over here, and you're sitting here trying to concentrate because hmm. I want to do this, Lord. This, this <laughs> yes. is, I mean, this is, I expect to be able to do this. You certainly expect to do with this, you know, mm -hmm. and it may be that those words that you were reading and claiming them, it may not mean anything right then, but it could be that there's a, some type of an exercise down the road mm -hmm. that, boy, you will draw on that information. So we've got to get it in there some way or the other. Mm -hmm. and I think sometimes when you pray to the Lord to bring these words to life, you know, yes. we know that these are living words. A lot of times we, we don't realize that it's when those challenges clump, come that you're compelled to, or that you're, you're, you're drawn to actually claim this and you understand yeah, I really need to say, Lord, um, do whatever the, the promise is saying, because this is exactly what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's more, it's real to you in that yeah. moment. Can I just add, and maybe you do only have time to read a verse or two in yes. the morning. And maybe you can make an effort to say, okay, I'm going to keep repeating this verse in my mind as I go throughout the day. And then maybe it'll become a living experience for you. Maybe mm -hmm. it'll help you yes. through some challenge, but just make that verse your own and see what God can bring to you through. Uh -huh. yes. Many years ago, the Lord taught me, I, I was spending an hour, at least an hour every morning in prayer. Uh -huh. And I wrote this book called Pressing Into His Presence. That's what he taught me to do. For probably 10 years, Every morning it was, an, and when I first came to 3ABN, I mean, it was like I'd get up at 3.30 in the morning so I could make sure I had that hour or two with him. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Even that became a crutch because mm -hmm. when I couldn't do it, let me mm -hmm. put it this way, when I couldn't do it, what happened was I got into a, a works-based mentality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it, I felt guilty because I wasn't doing it. You know, and it, I'm going to tell you, I do believe with all my heart, there's lots of times I'm just having the short, help me Lord mm -hmm. prayers. I do believe with all my heart, you can't rush into his presence and rush out and hear the still small voice mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned to do, and you all may have heard me say this, and that, but I practice his presence. And what I mean by that is I... He promised he would never leave us or forsake us, right? So he's right here with us now. He's not just in us. I think of him as being in the room with me. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like when, when I'm doing that, every text I answer, every email, every phone call, when I say I'll pray, pray for you, 
it's like the Lord and I are conversing right then. Mm -hmm. We're praying and it's all throughout the day, whether I'm doing the dishes or, or I'm working, it's just like I'm talking to him like he's right in the room with me. Mm -hmm. He is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, We've got only a yeah, minute the left. The one thing that I would like to just interject real quick, all of us here at this table, I truly believe are a work in progress. All of us, everywhere. So, you know, we're sitting here taking a little building block, put it here and here and here and here. Someday we're going to be able to see what, what we were making. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so just because right now there's obstacles, there's obstacles, but we're a work in progress. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So uh, here's, let's, we've only got like 40 seconds. So here's what I'm going to sum up. Mm -hmm. The power of walking in surrender. Jesus said in John 15, 5, you, without me, you can do nothing. But the Bible says in Ephesians 3, 16, that He puts His Spirit in us and we've got that dynamite power in the Spirit. He's leading us, He's guiding us, and He makes life beautiful. But don't ever make it a, mm, don't make it a chore. I love to spend time with this man because mm. I love him. And when yeah. you recognize, because he loves me, when you recognize how much the Lord loves you, it is easy to walk in his surrender. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank Our you. time just went, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you have a blessed Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <laughs>